come out here. I feel like there's a bit of flexibility in terms of what else they want to secure. The Thresh again for them, because missing was really stellar on it. Could be a pick, you just take it. Yeah, absolutely. You could just secure yourself that bot lane, give yourself that priority. You have the Tam Kench as well, which technically could be picked up. We have seen it picked plenty of times with the likes of the Jinx. And we wait to see now where JDG want to go. We wait to see now where they want to try and take this last bit of their draft. It is looking very similar to game one. It looks like Kanavi going to take out an old favorite. We know how good this man can be on Lee Sin, and he's going to be showing us again today on this pick. Yeah, and I love this pick with the Ryze because you have the point and click root, right? Guarantees you can land the Sonic Wave, have the burst damage to take your target down. Now, Wave are looking at potentially the Nautilus as an option when it's looking at support. It does mean we'll likely see things banned away from Angel's champ pool, so won't necessarily have a good response to the mid lane, but uh, focusing on trying to make sure there's a good matchup on the bot side. See if they end up locking this one in. And they are going to do so. So for me, I feel like Weibo, I'm looking at Tom Kench in particular. I think it's a great matchup in the Nautilus. Fresh. You can eat them out of the ultimate, right? Avoid that. Uh, I could also see them going towards the Thresh direction. Could make sense to me too. For JDG, that Orianna is something that we often see taken into the Rise. For sure, could see that one being panned out. Well, the Alistair's got to be the one, to those who don't know, missing. Kind of known for his Alistair for a very, very long time. Alongside his, you know, t his tenure on WE. They took that one out pretty much. Uh, he pretty much knows exactly what that champion is. I won't say he was it used to be a one trick, but he definitely used to be very, very prof uh, profitable for WE back then when he was on that team. So they're going to take that one off the board. The Galio being banned away. So we're seeing those global effective champions being taken off the board here by JDG. And again, the higher we go in terms of the teams, we tend to see more and more priority on those big, massive global champions. Interesting, interestingly enough, we're seeing Engage targeted by... Uh, Weibo, so potentially think that JDG are lacking that in the composition, which, you know, makes sense, but it does mean that Tom, Thresh are open and available for JDG, and I think they're perfectly happy with those setups. I like the Galio ban, especially as Weibo could have gone Galio Camille as a big threat. Oriana is kind of the last standout in my mind as a mid laner you'd ban here. Perhaps they want to lean in a bit of a different direction, could even target something towards the Shine. We're going to go for that Akshan, not wanting to face up against that. For me, for my money, I think Weibo probably could just take the Oriana here, leave last pick for the Shy to have a favorable matchup. Uh, but we'll see what they opt to do. See where they want to go with it. The Akshan is a very interesting one, but it has been something that uh, the Shy has piloted a couple of times this split. Do they go for the blind? I would not like to see a blind Fiora, as it is a bit of a strange one for the side of Weibo to go for. But no, they're going to go for the Ari. So a bit of pick potential, good early pushing power available to the side of Weibo now. And I feel like I'm I'm in, I'm in liking this composition a little bit better than game one. It does seem that they have a little bit more agency around the board, apart from you know just the one engage composition they had in game one. Well, I think the critical thing is that Renata felt really off theme for Weibo's composition, right? It meant they were so reliant on the Shy to go in. I like the fact they have the Nautilus, but I do think JDG probably is going to respond with the Tom Kench, which really just negates the impact, right? If you look at Weibo's composition, they have really strong single target pick, right, between an Ari and a Nautilus. This is prime Tom Kench uh, scenario, just to be able to save that person Charm Connects. Oh, never mind. That person is fine. They also take the cannon for 369. Anyone who's been tuning into JDG's games will see this as no surprise. He's been playing this pretty extensively and especially feels comfortable as a blind. And we might just have to shy going back to that Scion once again. Yeah, we might do. But I would like to see him go for something. He has got the counter pick and maybe look for something a little bit better in terms of the 1v1 matchup. But nope, gonna go with <laughs> the Scion. They save last pick, counter pick for the and shy. They pick and he just picks Scion again. Like... <laughs> He wants to, if he's just gonna pick Scion every time, it doesn't really work as a counter. Yeah, don't pick. don't keep don't pick it as a counter. But it does mean the 369 will have a little bit more agency in that lane. Of course, the melee into range means the cannon does get a little bit of a better setup here. And honestly, looking at these two compositions, we are seeing very similar things from you know from these two sides. They are looking for those 5v5s in terms of their top laners having those big impact ultimates, and it is going to be about the pickoff potential when you look at things like the Rise, the Ari, the Viego, the Lee Sin. So basically trying to find the best fights for your team is going to be pivotal for both these sides yeah and i think once again i'm looking at kanavi and what he can sort of do in this early game you have the lee sin you have the rise as well in the early levels that's really threatening for the ari right because i feel like ari viego spike a lot at lot of six you get your ultimate you get the reset potential in fights stellar but before then if Yugao just flashes onto you 
and, and root you and the least thing connects to sonic wave you're dead right there's, there's no outplay potential against that so again looking at jdg to have that really strong mid jungle to set up the side lanes particularly uh they have that jinx that they can look to snowball you have the tom kench for protection uh, and i think the team fight's really strong i will say that uh you know compared to the jace the cannon isn't really going to be pros pose as much threat to the scion you can kind of just really uh withstand a lot a lot of your harass i think you saw in that game one uh the shy taking a bit of a beat down from 369 he should have a bit of an easier time here but still the cannon can be hugely impactful when it comes to these team fights we've seen 369 from, from massive deficits we've seen uh jg come back on the back of some big cannon ults we have indeed and we're gonna see how this game goes like we mentioned jdg win this they guarantee themselves i believe top four and they look to try and make me put themselves right up there into top two it would be all on rng to win their final series to deny that but right now this is a moment here for weibo they need to try and be a bigger oh look at them they're so cute i've never seen rats with antlers but they're so cute uh, as we come back <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a rat, i haven't but... i have what would you call it I don't know, like a little weird jackrabbit thing. I don't know, man. I'm not rat. a rat. A rat. <laughs> a rat with antlers. No, Kennen is a rat. Kennen is an electric rat, right? But not with antlers. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know. Actually, I'm trying to think. There aren't many antlers like on champions in the game. Does, does, does Lily? Lily, does, ha Lily has antlers, I'm pretty sure, right? Does she have antlers? She must. Surely. I'm going to have a quick look at her splash chart um, as you tell me what, what these two teams want to do on the early game because we're going to see no early level one shenanigans like we did last time. I'm just going to see them both spreading out, making sure they don't lose any summoners. Yeah, so so for my money, uh, I really think pre-6 is where JDG's mid-jungle uh, have a ton of strength. Uh, I think post-6 is where Weibo's mid-jungle has a lot of strength. And the thing is, I, I feel like from that point onwards, I need to see SOFM and Angel have a fantastic game because I think as this game goes on, I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that the enemy team has Jinx once again. We have the Kennen as well for that really big team fighting power. Uh, I do think Weibo can hold up, but it's very much going to be around them finding that first initial kill, whereas JDG have so much AoE potential in these fights. And with the Tom Kench as well, it becomes very difficult, right, to contest uh, JDG because you land a charm on a target, they eat them out of it, and then they look to engage on you, and suddenly you're getting decimated by a Kennen in the backline. Clearly, does not have antlers, have huh. confirmed. But Orn does. So there you go. Orn has antlers. That's what we learned today. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> what would we do without you? I know. I'm honestly like, I don't even know if the LPL could function without this information being readily available on my casts. It's just something that, uh, you know, yeah. I, I, I like to be humble about it. Hashtag humble brag, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> well, I think a big thing to be said is, you know, game one. It was that early gang top lane to kind of uh, provide some some help to the shy that kind of allowed Kanavi to apply so much pressure to SFM. That, that's not going to come out here. That was like a, a sort of unique scenario. Uh, we're seeing a bit more standard play in this one. Both uh, junglers just clearing down towards the bot side. We'll be interested to see if any of them try to make something happen in the bot lane, right? Specifically, Hope and Missing have been able to find priority, but they haven't been able to crash. Uh, an ideal thing is if they were able to crush the wave, have a bounce back, that would lead to potentially Weibo's bot lane being overextended. Uh, things are just kind of meeting in the middle at the moment. Uh, but we do see a contest that's going to come out with the skull. Kanavi should be able to secure this. Yeah, not really a lot SOFM can do, but ooh, double knock over. They got the charms or the traps behind them. Wanfong in so much trouble, but he might be able to turn this one slightly around, but the great health there from missing. One more. Ooh, the zap, the auto attack. Ooh. Not quite. They don't get any of the kills, but they burned all of the summoners. A two for four trade in favor of JDG. And again, this is very similar to what we saw. Kanavi. That's what I'm in level four. I don't actually think he wants to fight this anymore. Is Yagao going to have to be popping himself down? There's going to be Angel, but they're going to go for the fight anyway. Is that I'm now in a little bit of trouble? He's going to be forced to flash away. And this is just summoners again. The breakneck speed of JDG coming back into game two. Yet they have the mid prio. They're able to get Yagao to move first. Bot lane is in a favorable spot as well. Once again, all three lanes with control for JDG. And this is where uh, at least can really flourish. And it feels pretty rough for the side of Weibo. Going to be able to scare that bot side scuttle. And, you know, it was unfortunate. I feel like Hope uh, went for the zap, but the minions got in the way. Maybe could have just got the kill with an extra two autos. But either way, as you said, so much burnt on the side of Weibo once again. So many flashes down early. Or do you see Kanavi now picking up both scuttles and looking towards top lane? The shy is very low and low on mana. 
But SFM is in the wings, so might just be here to help 369 crash the wave under the tower, but I think a dive would be a bit risky. Yeah, dive might be a little bit more risky as they don't have the... Uh, and again, you guys moving. I mean, they're going for it. There's not a lot of mana here for the shy, and he's got to be very careful. They will tank up the tower, get the stun down, land the Q. They're just trying to get the last bit of mana out of him as they go straight for him, and he's going to be taken down just about. One more auto attack does secure it as 369 flashes himself over the wall. Now Yagao might have to be using his own summoner. Flashes from the charm, and that's going to be a successful dive here from JDG. They do not let Weibo have a rest, Ox. Yeah, played it really well, right? They were very patient with it. The initial chunk comes from 369. They drop tower aggro. They wait out the decimating smash. And then they come in for the cleanup. This shy did survive a little bit longer than they'd hoped, right? They wanted to actually finish him off there. But they didn't want to stay in the tower. They burn the TP from Angel. They burn the flash from Angel. And despite that, they still get the kill and get out. And we can see the replay. So I just love this, right? They know that it's potentially risky. So they don't want to stay in tower uh, any longer than they need to. Get that initial poke. He's now just about in execute range. And Kanavi doesn't get him, but instantly leaves the tower. He wants to make sure it's not a trade. 369 picks it up. Yugao ends up having the trade flashes, but they get out. And I love the execution here. Again, this is just JDG in the early game being more aggressive, having more things to utilize to make sure these plays are working for them. You picked the Viego so early here for SOFM that it does mean that you're able to kind of telegraph what kind of a jungle style you're going for. Viego not exactly known to be a great 1-5 to five jungler. It's level 6 where he really hits that spike when you get that heartbreak you get those resets going for yourself. It will just be a little bit of an unfortunate start here for the side of Weibo, but they will be able to get some priority in mid and bot, which should equal themselves a dragon. This is a good start for them now, because the last game, it was JDG who were able to turn that Infernal Soul into a win condition. This time around, Weibo not going to have such a... An, or, excuse me, JDG not going to have such an easy time of stacking those dragons. Yeah, they critically, they get that first dragon, which is going to help them out. Uh, and, you know, hold the thought. I think Kanavi might find a Gankang. Remember, no flashes available. No flashes there. Huan Fong... Gonna land, get away from this as they do get the dredge line off. Is on in a little bit of trouble here. Don't think they're gonna be able to get anything else off of it. So it's just gonna be a trade of health bar. But again, Kanavi very active in this early game, looking to be aggressive, looking to affect these lanes. Yeah, doesn't find the angle though. And something critical to say is that Angel hasn't really been threatened so far this game in the mid lane. Uh, there's definitely set up there if you land the Rune Prison into the Sonic Wave. Felt like maybe that'd be somewhere where they punish, but hasn't really come to fruition. And now Angel has level six. SFM is about to get his level 6 from this red buff. That is where this mid-jungle for Weibo spikes, and we can start to see them a bit more proactive. Actually, still not level 6. Needs another camp, I believe. So closing in on that point, but not quite there yet. Not quite there just yet. As we wait to see now where JD do you want to go for. And again, not as crazy skirmishing happening in terms of game 1, in terms of kills, but Yagao now... Might be in a little bit of trouble. SFM just hit 6, so he has got the Heartbreaker available to him. Doesn't quite have Flash. But he's just kind of wandering around, seeing if he can find something and will be spotted out there. So good good presence there from Yaga to recognize. He doesn't want to go too aggressive and doesn't want to get caught out too easily. Yeah, definitely. Especially at this point, you know the RE can just check you, dash in, find that charm, right? You have no flash available. You don't have the cleanse that you're playing with at the moment, thanks to some of the spell book. Uh, but still not something you want to play around with. And now I want to see Weibo trying to make things happen with that mid jungle. I want to see them moving around, look at the skirmishes. The thing is, like, you know, with the Lee Sin and the Rise, they're very good at taking out single targets. So in small numbered skirmishes, Stella. But, oh, you got in trouble. He got a cleanse, though. He had that in the back pocket because of the spell book. SOFM tries to get him on top of him with the, with the Heartbreaker, but he's not quite able to get himself away. You go. <gasps> knock. Ooh, Angel, one more Q. But he gets Rune Prison down, lands it just at the last second. It's still a two-for-one trade up here for the side of Weibo as SOFM gets himself a nice reset and almost stops the counter kill. And that's exactly what we need from this Ari, from this Viego, right? They get the initial kill because they're the ones who start the play. And then as a result, oh, we were looking for the bot lane play. I mean, you can go for missing here. He does have the gray health, but that means his real health bar is going to be there. He flashes out as this is going to be Hope trying to go for something. They get oh. the flash away. And that's going to be enough for them to try and maybe keep him alive. And honestly, Hope's got himself some decent damage here. One more auto attack on the one bomb. And they've turned it around. 2v2, two kills for Hope. Huge overstep from Weibo. You can see the plan from Hope is kite out, wait for the Chakrams to drop. That's when Wong Fong was super threatening. And critically, they burnt so much damage to Tom Kent. It's Tom Kent, right? 
he's there to do that to soak to allow his jinx to ramp up with a lethal tempo and get the turn around so just as we see a great play for the mid jungle from weibo we will get a replay off we see a mistake of the bot man so critically they go on your gal i remember as much as he has to cleanse to stop the cc still vulnerable just to the constant damage coming out they get that reset and that's the critical thing right it means angel dashes over the wall kanavi has to commit more for him and also sfm gets that extra rotation of spells the extra ultimate so much power and now it's bot lane play so critically ult comes down from hong kong and now the amount of chakrams he has he's doing so much damage hope doesn't even try an auto he knows he just needs to get out but this passage away means a lot has been and critically Hong Kong Shakram's actually reset in that play so ended up dropping a decent amount and it meant that you were able to see hope re-engage with the stacked up lethal tempo and turn things around and this is again similar to what we saw in game one when it comes down to the bot lane 2v2 Hong Kong and on just can't hold a candle to hope and missing hope and missing have had their number of this bot side and just look like the better duo so far this series and it's been a bit of a thorn in the side of weibo gaming and what looked like it was going to be a very good start to the side of weibo getting those counter kills getting two kills there one for your mid laner one for your jungler like you said between sofm and angel ends up really putting that bot lane in a hole and again we're looking at 20 cs lead a thousand gold now as we can see there i believe that's a three thousand assist there for missing in the lpl congratulations to him and kanavi looking to try and make something happen here on this top side they haven't been bullying the shy like they did in game one but 369 is here and 369 is just going to be able to soak up this wave yeah not going to bother with it because a lot would have to be invested to take the shy down he is pretty bulky and he's been having an okay time so far this game obviously the cannon matchup not as painful as jace in terms of getting punished but you know oh I don't think he's SFM's going to find anything yet. You know, we had the positive for the mid jungle from Weibo, but I'm just concerned, again, as you said, that bot lane. They opted out of the Jinx this time. Game one, you know, they didn't really have the choice of it, but they opted into the Aphelios. They're losing lane. They're down significantly in gold, and you're going to get not only outranged, but outscaled by this pick in the later stages. It's really concerning because, you know, it's not even like last game where you have a Renata uh, and you have an Orianna off the side of Weibo, you know, things that can shield your Aphelios and, and bolster him and make him more relevant later on you don't have that right you have an Ari and a nautilus so jinx is just going to massively outvalue you as the game goes on and i am concerned that already hope is so strong nearly five thousand gold in pocket only 369 has more money than him yeah it is getting tough for the side of weibo as we can look to see now jdg taking out this dragon they're going to stop the stack early enough and that's going to be a very good objective bounty for themselves we'll see what rift we go towards it is going to be a mountain rift so a couple of opportunities here for the side of jdg to maybe put themselves in a decent footing we are going to see a full commit into this bot side and this is just really good macro play from jdg take dragon rotate down with your jungler you already have priority in this bot side so you already know you're going to be able to pick up this tower pretty much full full-fledged and there's nothing else you could really do Juan Fong I was gonna say you need to be so careful that get excited is dangerous ends up using his gale force and the rest of JDG are now on the retreat Kanavi doesn't quite know where on is but has a spidey sense that he's gonna be around somewhere and has to get himself back out but again just really good play coming out here from JDG yeah and just before that I'm saying hope you know nearly 5,000 gold nearly 6,000 now right I, I love the play from JDG you know I've talked a lot about herald usage how Two plates mid, and then the second Herald mid can allow you to take that mid tier one. That could often be worth it for map control. But if you have a lane, you want a snowball. If you have a Jinx, just slam it bot, get that massive influx, and really put your AD carry ahead. Yeah, well, the Slicing Maelstrom is going to be used after the Unstoppable Onslaught was invested. You do have the Ignite being used there by the Shy as he does have an unsealed spell book, but now he's being kited out. The rest of JDG are now here. He has to flash away, but not quick enough on the button. So he gets stunned up. You've got the ultimate. Actually, you don't have an ultimate, excuse me, on Oh, no, 369! Oh, 369 goes a bit too far forward, but they are going to get him out with the Devourer. Flashes away, missing to the rescue. And that is a big, big play there for the JDG support. Yep, manages to save 369. 369, I'm not sure why you went so deep back in, but regardless, uh, the effect of the play, the Shy chunk, uh, chunked out, means Hope is going to get even more plates here. This Jinx is reaching astronomical levels right now of power. It's almost it's a, 2, a 2k 000. gold it lead is. between 80 carries alone. It's a 2k gold lead between Huan Fong and Hope, and that's a Jinx. That Jinx <sighs> is going to go back, that's finish powder, off the baby. That's our <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no <laughs> to come back into the game but like it's a 4,000 gold lead two of which is on to jinx two of which is going to be very very effective at just keeping the shy down keeping this pick composition with the viego and the ari away from getting onto that back line because you have to respect the damage uh, and this is the thing, right? We saw Weibo in that second rotation of bans target specifically engaged supports, right? It was the Leon and the Alistair, I believe. They didn't opt to ban the Tom. Oh, I'm going to hold that thought. Well, you're going to hold that thought, but the Shy is not going to hold any more of a health bar. He is going to die. That is Konami you know picking up that kill. I feel like it wasn't even, there wasn't even much point past the. No, just, no. Go back, go back. Just, you know yeah. what? We'll reset. Continue your point. <laughs> yeah, so they, they banned the Leon and the, the Alistair being concerned about these engaged tools. But the thing is, right? I was thinking Tom Kench and thresh with, with potentially bigger problems the tom is being is going to be such a thorn in the side when it comes to these late game scenarios because in my mind the way weibo win a fight is to kill the jinx it's it, like she has to die or you're just going to get decimated but tom kench there it's such a get out of jail free card that it's so hard to deal with and i'm really concerned about how weibo are going to find that angle because it's not like they have some fantastic flankers right yes the shy can definitely charge from a flank angle and cc you but as long as missing's faster than the ultimate which he has been so far it should be okay for hope right he should be able to navigate this two items now completed already a whole item lead on Huang Fung. this is painful for weibo Again, and how do you fight around these objectives? A minute 20 till this dragon spawns. You have a Rift Herald available to you. And honestly, this is just JDG. Very similar to game one. Just outpacing the side of Weibo as the Shy tries to go in on the 369. Gets literally no damage. Had got the exhaust there just to try and go for something. And this is just a repeat. You know, 369 has honestly been playing so, so well. And we go back to an original conversation between, you know, the start of the split, JDG and Top Esports. They made a trade, Zoom for 369. We talked about, you know, who came out of that breakup a little bit better. I think 369, he's looked fantastic since he's made his move. He's finally found his footing and re and straight up, he has a starting position and Zoom doesn't. So he's been looking great. Yeah, he's really been fantastic. This series in particular, right? The Jace uh, coming out massive in that game one. And this game, you know, the Shire's a hole breaker, but he's still holding up fine in terms of the 1v1 matchup and has that team fighting potential. Now the Shy might just be in trouble. Yep, there's the exhaust we were just talking about. Juan Fong gonna try and sorry, not Juan Fong missing, gonna try and see if he can get on top of them. They do land themselves some nice CC, get the exhaust oh, down, that's so sad. swing <laughs> and a miss. I hope you wanted to get the extra kill participation, but it's just not going to be. They even had the extra little bit of CC to stop him from rampaging in the zombie form, but now you don't have a Scion, and Dragon's up in five seconds. Yeah, I mean, it should just be a free take for JDG. The thing is, the Shy was like burning that ult for the 1v1 matchup, didn't have it as an escape tool. So, just means you're in an even worse position to try and fight this. We'll get a pause coming out. Not sure what that necessarily is about, but 5,000 gold lead right now for JDG, right? They're 1 0 up in this series. And I kind of want to bring you back to the stakes on this, because currently, right now, we have uh, JDG in fifth place, right, in the standings. Yep. If they, if they win this, because their game score is so incredibly good, only topped by V5, they will go all the way from 5th to 2nd. And the only team who can even re-overtake them would be RNG, right? They would maintain their spots above top esports and Weibo just from winning this one game, right? So massive potential here. And to be 1-0 up, and on top of that, to also have this massive lead in game 1, it's humongous. The fact that we could see with JDG who had a, a pretty mediocre start of the split potentially looking at a second place finish crazy yeah i do have one update of two things first update is i don't have any update on why we have a pause gonna hopefully get some of the information soon so that's that update that's second update. update and that's an update in itself i've updated you that i have no info so i'm as going into this as blind as everybody else the other update that i do have is that anyone's legends versus we will actually be taking place after this series so once this series is done we will be wrapping it up and then going back to it so we just switched the series around we took a little bit of a longer break and that's how we're gonna go for it i'm also going to apologize to lyric who's sitting in dublin airport right now expecting me to pick him up sorry uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be able to make it for a like, little while. <laughs> I feel like this was orchestrated specifically to uh, screw over Lyric. Uh, I feel yeah, like that was the I'm plan I'm going to have to here. send him my address and be like, get a taxi, mate. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 I was supposed well, to pick you up, but... <laughs> you know, things happen. And League of Legends comes hey! first. Speaking of League of Legends, we are back in the game. Going to see that Herald actually picked up by Weibo. So able to get that uh, while JDG are prioritizing this dragon on the bot side. Is second Herald not the highest priority? Especially when none of the towers are that low. Uh, 
can be difficult to translate it into a, a tower. And obviously, ideally, you want to be taking down that mid-tier one. But for the time being, they will collect that. They will indeed. And this is going to be a bit of a hard one now for the side of Weibo. And honestly, I want to try and talk about this in terms of, like, you know, as we said, talk the grand scheme of things. When is it good to get into form? When is it bad to start losing yours? You look at some of the most recent games for Weibo. You look at, you know, the, 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 the teams they've played recently. They won against IG 2-0. Good for them. They lost 0-2 to RA. Not great. That's a playoff team. 2-0 loss to Top Esports. Again, another playoff team. They barely won against OMG and LNG in 2-1s, respectfully. This is a team that is slowly losing their form, which is not exactly the great time to lose, especially because we're going at the best of fives in the next week or two. And then you look at the other side of that, JDG on a five-game win streak, going to be possibly ending it today with six. And, you know, they took down RA 0-2 in favor of JDG. They took down LNG 2-0. They took down V5 2-0. Those are three playoff teams that JDG absolutely routed. And this is just the best time time of the year to get yourself into a good position yeah i feel like we've had teams like edg lng weibo who've really slumped hard after the initial strong start and then it's like top esports jdg who have really ramped up over the course of the season looking like big threats going towards playoffs and the thing is the amount of the amount of uh placements that jdg get if they win the series guaranteed third if rng uh don't manage to win their series they will get second and with this deficit, 5,000 in favor, right? We're looking at the AD carries, looking at the fact that Hope is so far ahead of Kwong Kwong on this Jinx. It's scary. We now have a TP coming out from Angel. They're looking for something. But again, there's a Tom Kench there. What are you going to do? Yeah, there's just not really a lot you can look for. And that's, as we say, we come back into the game and we talk about 5,000 gold lead in favor of JDG. The Rift Herald is confirmed to be dropped into the mid lane, so they will get the charge. But second Rift Herald is going to be not as valuable. And also, you didn't have the wave, which you see, you can't even get the tower just yet. You're just peppering it down for later. And... This is where the game starts to get very scary for Weibo. 369, though, he walked over a ward. They know exactly where he is, and they're collapsing on top uh -oh. of him. Decimating smash goes all on top of him, but they're going to try and rail morph him in. There, it's going to be a There's slicing Nelson. The rest of the squad comes in, and the shy will fall. This is starting to feel like a rinse and repeat now for the side of JDG. They do not leave a man hanging, as the rest of Weibo just cannot come in. They cannot continue the fight, as hope is just too damn big. And that felt like that was kind of a worst case scenario for JDG. Like someone's getting picked, isolated alone. This is exactly what Weibo won. And then the whole team comes in with the Realm Orb. And it's suddenly five members strong instantly to respond. Weibo have to back away. They lose to Shy. Fortunate not to lose any more. Angel dodging away from the Zap last second. But even when it looks like a favorable play for Weibo, it isn't. And that's just kind of how it is. Let's have a look at the replay here. Because again, they catch him out. And you feel like they're going to go for it. He knows the rest of Weibo are coming. But then JDG just go, no one shall <laughs> die on our team. And then they all just corral themselves. And then what looked like a good rotation, an early rotation from Weibo's team. You can see Huan Fong and Om, they're just not there. It's a 5v3. Yeah, they couldn't match the pace. And that's the thing with an Ari with uh you you have to feel like with an re like you're gonna be the one who's matching on these plays first like you can use an old use a couple of charges to get over but they just didn't factor in the realm warp the whole team turning up and as a result jg just further ahead in this one five thousand gold lead still just over it's not getting better and we're looking at a minute away from another dragon and here's the thing mountain soul is humongous for the side of uh jdg right because critically it's just gonna make your uh job of killing hope that much harder right he's gonna have that extra shield the extra protection he's already been really difficult to catch out because of the the presence of the tom kench it's gonna amplify it even more so right that extra shield to stop you from being able to burst him well they finally get themselves a little bit of free time here onto the tower Gravitum plus Severum will be enough to take that one down. It is still a 5,000 gold lead in favor of JDG. 35 seconds until the dragon spawns. That will put Soul Point in favor of JDG. Like you mentioned, this is 
Just a very, very good Drake for the side of a JDG, even for Weibo, but you've already got two items across the board. A Black Cleaver now for Kanavi. I love this pickup. He recognizes that he just needs to try and shred down some of the extra little bit of uh, armor and resistances so that Hope can do Hope's job. Hope can get himself into these positions as on aggressively going forward is going to drop down his ultimate. They will get the Devourer out of the Tam Kench, but look at on. He's dead. He hasn't got the tanky stats. He went Glacial Augment, not aftershock and now the shy he walks in he's got to walk out Juan Fong gets himself a nice grab and they will land the charm on the 369 SOFM has not even begun to be a part of this tight team fight and the shy has to walk away that's going to be mid lane turret that's going to be dragon soul point JDG are just owning this map yeah and I feel like that fight was perfect illustration of why Tom Kench is so good here why I think Weibo should have banned it. And also, just why Nautilus is really neutered by the pick. One of the big things, one of the big strengths of Nautilus, why you've seen it so high in priority, is because you walk up, you press R, and that target is CC'd. You can't cleanse it, right? The only thing you could really do was stop watch it, is one of the things you can outplay. But the Tom Kench just eliminates that. And this is a prime example. Imagine if there wasn't a Tom, right? This would be a charm follow-up potential to kill the Jinx. Bare minimum, hope at least has to be in Summoners. But instead, nothing is been other than the Tarmol, which is, you know, pretty shortly coming back up on cooldown. And I feel like it just completely shuts down what Weibo wants to do. And I just want to reiterate, in the draft, Weibo had an opportunity to ban Tom Kench and opted not to. And now they are regretting it. Yeah, they're regretting it pretty badly right now as... Uh we come back into the game and it's again just more and more pressure more and oh more God, items being, now yeah i was just about to say more and more items that's an infinity edge for the side of hope and hopes very quickly losing itself on the side of weibo but they might find a little bit of engage and they will catch somebody out good pick here for 369 exactly what you said you wanted to see them do but now the rest of jdg are here we talked about this oh, there's so gonna be the slick. kick into the rocket and there's hope getting resets two kills for one you'll take that deal any day of the week and once again it's weibo looking for a play where they have numbers advantage and very quickly getting collapsed on and he gets turned around in favor of jdg hope with another two kills in pocket currently looking at a six thousand gold lead five zero one on the jinx it's just looking so doomed for weibo right now it's just looking very, very doomed, and this is just JDG building more momentum. JDG getting themselves ready for playoffs. JDG looking like a little bit of a dark horse now coming into this last few series. As we can see, the Devourer coming out stops any kind of overextension, oh and thank you very much. 6-0 and 1 now for Hope. He hasn't even gone back for himself to get that dragon, and they just get themselves all the way to the mid lane. The Gowan Rise needs to be banned away. You can't let this through anymore. It's so frustrating to deal with, right? The, the rotation's really strong. They pick up another tier 2 mid. On the back of that, goal lead has gone from 6,000, which I was just talking about before, to 8,000. They're so far ahead. And the thing is, they don't need to even look towards the Baron. They can get some vision set up, sure. But 2 minutes 45 for the next uh, Dragon for Soul, that's all they have to play for. 369, you know, there's two positives to this play. One, your team claps down pretty quickly to respond. But also, he gets the whole wave, right? <laughs> Real talk, I think he's happy with the fact he managed... <laughs> they get all the minions there on the back of the ultimate. Uh, but ultimately, you know, this beautiful kick coming out from Kanavi. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it is. Just pushes them straight into the rocket. They pop the uh, the traps down so he cannot go forward anymore. Has to use the Heartbreaker over the edge. And Hope is just becoming a monster. Hope is just becoming an absolutely crazy beast. And this is something <clears throat> that we've had for a couple of years mm. now where the AD carries haven't been of the greatest caliber. It's kind of been Jackie Love, Vipers on a, a state of his own, but then there was kind of the rest. But this particular season, Fotic, Hope, these guys have stepped up and really made themselves counted towards the side of best AD carry in the league, or at least very, very strong AD carries in this league. As we see the shy having to use his ult defensively because he knows if he gets caught, he's dead. Yep, and the, there's a tried and tested trick currently, this split, which is pick Jinx. <laughs> But jokes yeah. aside, I mean, I, I, I feel like it's been solid play from Hope. And I think the 2v2 in particular is something I want to highlight from the series where JDG have excelled over Weibo. Both games has just felt like they've been in control. Uh, they found favor. There was a double kill, if you remember, earlier this game from Hope where they managed to turn that 2v2 around. And right now, JDG really trying to choke out Weibo, right? They have 369 pushing this wave top. They have they play very aggressive for the vision in this red side jungle. And then they match the wave to push in. And now, 
Maybe we're looking again. They're gonna go for a 369 with the slicing. Nellstorm is just gonna wreck it. Huanfang is dead. Double kill. Maybe even a triple. Nope. 369 takes that one away. They will land the charm onto Yagao. It's thinking that maybe they could end this game off at a penta, but it, no, you go. <laughs> doesn't get the trip. He doesn't get allowed on the bus. Not fair. I'm fine Not with okay. that, right? Because he can he can play interruption on SFM. Doesn't even let him get close, right? It's rude. He's spot in mid, forces him away, and now Baron secured. 30 seconds until that dragon. They're going to be able to get the fast resets and go to that one. Over 10, it's a 12,000 gold lead, just shy of it. I, I don't know, man. This is looking pretty doomed. <laughs> I'm just going to say. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it. It is just looking kind of doomed and uh, not really much else to talk about in this game. Weibo have just been outdrafted, outplayed. JDG, they even knew the guy was there. This was we Weibo looking for the engage. He just didn't know where 369 it's, was. It's a tank rise, man. Like, <laughs> look how little damage they did to go in that situation. They did nothing. It's just, I don't know. It just feels desperate right now from Weibo. And now Dragon's gonna get picked up. This is Soul. I already healed in this earlier, but you have a Blood Thirst. Bear in mind, right? Blood Thirst on Jinx with a Mountain Soul with a Tom Kench who also has Locket. And Tom has QSS. So it's not even like you can CC him really, unless you get like AoE CC, like a knock up from the Shy or on. I don't know, man. This feels incredibly doomed, even if I'm being optimistic. But Weibo still gonna try and look for an angle. The critical thing is they have found kills when people are isolated. They end up getting collapsed on after, but that's still definitely the angle they need. They need a mistake from JDG. Yeah, that's the only way we can put it down to is that JDG need to throw several, several miracles into fa in the favor of Weibo where they just get at, they kill the Jinx multiple times. The cannon never gets off, but here we go. This could be the final fight of the game as we can see on trying to make something happen, but Yagao has not even lost his shield. On flashes away and has to use the dredge line defensively. While that's been happening, 369 has been pushing in the mid lane. Bot lane will be broken. The inhibitor not long for this world and the rest of Weibo are just going to get rinsed, destroyed, decimated by the side of JDG. JDG who are on the rise, JDG who are looking like the 2020 JDG back-to-back -back finalists, the team that is just doing so much right now are coming into the playoffs with massive momentum. They will guarantee themselves at least a top three finish, if not a top two, and they will go into the playoffs on the highest of forms. They know how good they are. They know how good they can be, and they are a dark horse for the playoffs absolutely crushed them in that game. Wasn't even close. I feel like game one, yep. there was at least a little bit more fight in Weibo, but they just got decimated there, right? And Weibo's run of form has definitely been trending downward for JDG. Look on point, and I have so much praise. I feel like everyone on the team was playing with well this series, right? Kanavi, super aggressive with the proactive plays in that game one with 369 out playing and just being a better top this series than the shy you gals solid on the rise in the bot lane uh, i think is something that we don't initially think of when we look at uh at jdg but they really outperformed uh Weibo's totally. bot lane both games getting that 2v2 kill but also just permanently having that pressure yeah and that means that we are seeing now a plus 14 scoreline now for JDG. They put themselves all the way. They leapfrog top esports. They leapfrog Weibo. Technically, right now, they've leapfrogged RNG as they have a higher win percentage, but RNG still have one more game to play as we did have a couple of delays. But this is just a fantastic team coming into the best of forms and the best of times. And honestly, I'm hyped for this team now coming into playoffs. This is, a, as I said in the cast, there's a dark horse. This is a team that looks like it can be incredibly competitive. And this is a team you need to be very careful of. Yeah, currently with that on a six series win streak coming into playoffs, which is absolutely huge. As you said, they've leapfrogged up. They are guaranteed at least top three. If RNG yep. lose their series against OMG, they will get top two. Uh, but either way, still just a tremendous position to be in given they had a shaky start to split, right? There were question marks, there were concerns, and they are really just ramped up. To, to such a position where going into playoffs, as you said, a real dark horse. In fact, I feel like not even a dark horse at this point. They are looking like a strong competitor. Contender. One of the top competitors. Contender. Yeah, absolutely. I think they got. I think calling them a dark horse at this point is actually a little bit. I wouldn't say insulting. They're just but a horse. Just a horse. <laughs> They're just a good horse. You know, get the odds on them and put your wager on. That's all it has to be. But. 
unfortunate for Weibo, we got to talk about the other side of this coin. This team feels like it's kind of been a bit found out and falling apart just a tiny bit. Honestly, I'm not loving the Scion trade-offs. I'm not loving the ideas behind them. The bot lane's not really sticking out that well. I've got to call, just, you know, a spade a spade. I think SOFM has not looked fantastic. It's it's really not looking like the Weibo we saw at the start of Split. It just feels like both games, the series, enemy team had pressure in all three lanes. And I, I, yep. I just... I don't understand why you have the shy, right? And he has counter pick top and you're picking Scion. Like, what is the point? Honestly, like, uh, you know, I, I feel like there's a list of top laners who would have capitalized so much better in the LPL. We always praise the LPL for the top laners who would have picked something to have an advantage in that match of have a, a, a lane you can play through. But no, the shy just picked Scion again. And I, I just don't understand it. I also don't understand the draft. They banned, you can see there, the Leona and the Alistair Ban the Tom, right? Uh, I yeah. think it was so distinctly obvious how